What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to be going over getting users feedback and using that feedback to potentially modify or change your app. So in the past couple of videos we got the app live in a beta version on both the Play Store and the App Store. So with this we were able to give the app out to people and have them actually start testing the app. So there are built-in ways that you can get feedback from TestFlight and Google Play, I believe, but one thing I like to do is create a form with questions that are going to guide the user to give you better feedback. So realistically, the people that you probably are giving this app to to test it initially are going to be people you know, like friends or family, and they're going to be less likely to be critical of the app. They're going to be more likely to be supportive and kind of give you not great feedback, really, and they'll kind of just tell you, you know, oh, it's good, or, or something that's like, not actually constructive. So if you can find random people, more random people that would be more users for your app, that is going to be more ideal in the beginning. But regardless, even getting people who potentially might not be a user for your app, it's still good to get them to get some input in it. So a form like this that I have right here is one that I set up. You can see it has a couple questions, so it's easier for them to kind of give you feedback and it's easier for you to test your changes with this as well if you can put a kind of a number metric to it so for instance how easy was the app to use it's a one to five scale here so they can just choose a number now it's all subjective really so how easy they think it is to use it doesn't really it doesn't necessarily correlate to how easy the app actually is to use but since they're the user of the app what they think actually does matter in this case so if you can get everyone to be giving it a five, then you pretty much know the app is pretty easy to use. I'll go through each question. Did you experience any bugs or errors? So this is pretty self-explanatory. If the app is crashing for them or they're getting any actual problems, they can answer that there. And then this question I like to ask is, were they confused at any point while using the app? Because if they're confused while using the app, it means you didn't build the app to guide them to do what you want them to do in the app. So. This is help. This is a helpful way to get actual constructive uh, feedback here, where they might not actually tell you this if you don't ask for it. The other thing is just asking them what obvious changes they think should be made. You've been looking at this app for so long, so you don't even you don't have fresh eyes on it now. So you've been you've been staring at the app, you've been building it. You're in a you're in a sense. Uh, blind to some things that might seem so obvious like change this text here or add a button to do this thing so that's why i like to ask that question this question is more of to gauge kind of future use of the app is to see if anyone is willing to pay for this app and then if not what features would actually need to be added for them to pay for the app this is kind of a good way to to see if the app has a value if the app has use so if someone's willing to pay for it then then the app is useful and i mean that's the goal if you can get someone to pay for it and this doesn't mean that you have to actually make the app a paid thing but if you can get someone to pay for it that's basically them saying yes this is valuable i i would back this with my money this question here is just a way to say is there something in the app that you don't think should be there so that kind of is a leading question as well to kind of get them to say something about that and then i like to leave kind of a general suggestions or features or comments thing at the end there and then finally i like to ask just yes or no do you think the app in the current state of the beta version that you're in is ready to go live all of these responses here once you create this google form which is really pretty self-explanatory you just can click and add new components to it you can send the form to your beta testers and then they can fill it out and you'll you'll get the responses over here in the response so one thing about these responses though is just because one of your beta testers says something, for instance, one of your beta testers might be confused by a feature, that doesn't mean you need to change that. It doesn't even mean that it's actually a confusing feature. It just means that they were confused by it. So the more people you have test this and the more people you get to fill out this form, the better, because if you see, if you, have, if you for instance, give it to three people and one person is confused by one feature, that might mean that one person is just confused by that feature. Now, if you give it to 30 people and 25 of them are confused by that feature, then you should definitely look into updating that feature. 
Another thing to note is the beta tester might not know the full context of the app and they might not even really know what the app is about or its purpose. So you have to keep that in mind and kind of give them that information up front because someone that's downloading the app from one of the app stores is going to have a little bit more context because the app store is going to have a description and it's going to have screenshots and it's going to have more context of what they can expect in the app before they're using it. So these beta testers aren't necessarily going to have that level of of pre-knowledge before they're using the app. So that can cause some, some confusion as well. So keep that in mind. And just because someone find something in your app that they don't like does not mean that you should remove it. If you do, if they do have any bugs or errors, then you should definitely fix those. But just because someone doesn't like something in your app, it doesn't mean you can't keep it. You also need to keep in mind the type of person that is beta testing your app and ask yourself, are they actually in the demographic of the user base of my app? So for instance, with my travel budget app, if I give if I have a beta tester who travels a lot and budgets a lot for trips, then their feedback is going to be weighted higher in my mind than a user who never travels and never would be planning out a trip because they're never really going to use my app. That the app is not actually for them. So their feedback matters less because they aren't ever even going to use the app. So keep that in mind as well when you are selecting your beta testers and when you're getting feedback from people who might not even be in the user base of your app. So that kind of wraps up getting users feedback. It's definitely, definitely something you should do. This is not a step that you should skip. You should be getting users feedback because they're going to see things in the app that you might not see. And they're going to think of things in the app that you might not have thought of. And ultimately they're the ones that are going to be using the app. So their feedback is very important. If you have your app as a beta version, and you want me to review it, go ahead and link it down below or send me an email at one man startup at gmail.com. And I'm thinking I'll do maybe one video reviewing, doing a couple quick reviews of multiple people's beta versions. So yeah, definitely as soon as your beta is live, you should be getting users feedback. And ideally you want this form to be set up before you have your beta version set up and you're inviting people to it. But even if you did already invite people to the beta version, you can still send them this form link and just ask them for their feedback. And most people I feel in my experience have been pretty good of filling it out. All right, one quick thing before we go, if you haven't already gotten a custom domain name for your app or project, head on over to Namecheap and you can get some really good deals right now on uh, all the products they offer, especially domain names. Uh, you can see their domains right now are up to 95% off. If you're interested in a .com, you get it for less than $7 a year, as well as all these other offers that they have. Um, getting that custom domain or custom hosting is very easy through Namecheap. It's always what I use. So use the link down below. It helps support the channel. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Ciao for now.